What is going on everybody? In this video, we are going to be setting up MinIO on a Raspberry Pi 4. There are a few videos before this one. I didn't explicitly state we were going to be running MinIO because honestly, I wasn't sure if I was gonna go that far. Uh, with that being said, let's jump right in. So I have a, a Raspberry Pi 4 here. Uh, with an external SSD drive, and I have that mounted to the Pi 4, uh, which makes a lot of noise, so I'm going to try to set that as far as I can from the microphone so that isn't just buzzing the whole time, although that might still get picked up a little bit. Okay, so let's get to our Pi and make this bigger so we can see, and I'm just going to SSH uh, the name that I set up is Gary, and you can do Pi4. Now, if that doesn't connect for you, a uh, few things that could go wrong. Uh, make sure you have the name of your Raspberry Pi correct, uh, and you have your, uh, your SSH key on the Pi4. Uh, if you can see it on your network, go ahead and reboot your PC. I've had that happen before. Also, if you have a VPN, make sure that's not running. That can also trip you up a little bit. Okay, so here we are in the Pi 4, and we just need to uh, run MinIO. Uh, I've run this before, so I'm just going to do a PS-A. Ah, yes. So that's already on there. I'm going to do a Docker container prune uh, to just remove that. And if we're starting from scratch, let's go ahead and we'll just look for MinIO Docker. And this first link here. And it might change, but I will also try to put that down in the description of this video uh, so you can get to it easily. Uh, we don't need to make the data directory because in my case, I have the external SSD mounted with a symbolic link to my home directory. So I'm going to do that, make that the data directory. Uh, so there is about two terabytes that it can use in case I want to put massive amounts of data on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. Switch back over to the Pi 4. Let's give us plenty of room to see here. All right, I'm just gonna leave that as the default uh, username and password. Uh, you can update that as you see fit. And actually, oh, maybe I should have uh, fired up an extra terminal. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and SSH to it again, just so we can see uh, that data directory. And you see that that is there. All right, and that is what we're going to be using here rather than uh, making a regular directory. And we can just go ahead and fire that up. And while that's running, we can also check that we have uh, ports 9000 and 901, I believe we will need to open. So I'm gonna maximize that. Keyboard's going a little wonky here. There we go. Okay, uh, UFW status, and we could leave that off. Oh, pseudo UFW status. Okay, inactive, which is fine. Uh, let's see, we could do pseudo, uh, well, let's do UFW dash dash help. See what we have available to us. Uh, we can have allow, enable, disable. I thought there was a quick way to see uh, which ones were already allowed. So I'm just going to do UFW. Oh, forgot the sudo again. Sudo UFW allow 22 just to make sure, okay, that I can SSH. And I'm going to do allow. 9,000, yep. Uh, your output's going to look different, so I already did this on the Pi. Maybe a little, little lazy on my part, 
but I didn't want to go back through burning the image, mounting uh, the external hard drive. And I'll just do UFW, is it activate or enable? I always get those backwards. Ah, must be enable. That's fine. And we're still in the pie, so that seemed to work. Okay, so now what we can do, uh, we see uh, we have it running, and these are our local host or loopback addresses going back to the Pi itself. Um, well, this one would be if you're in the uh, Docker network. If that doesn't make sense, again, as always, just kind of wave your hand at it. It's not that important. Uh, but we are forwarding port 9000 and 9001 uh, to the local host, which is the Pi. And then we have those open. So we should be able to just go to a browser and go to Pi 4. And I believe it's 9000. We'll give that a moment. Oh, well, it kicked me over to 901. So that's okay. And... Since we did not update this, and this is not secure at all, but if you're in your home network, I mean, it's not really that much of a concern. This is more just to, and actually I apologize, I should have made that bigger a while ago. And paste that there. Log in. I don't want to save that. Oh, so it looks like I already used this before. So I'm just going to go to buckets. Uh, let's see. Is there an easy way for me to delete this? Yes. Oh, I guess I need to empty the items out of it. And to do that, I'm just going to delete and then go back to buckets and now it should allow me to delete it wonderful okay i'm going to delete the key that i already had generated if you're just jumping in here it might give you a kind of starter thing that says hey create key now um, and if you fired it up before you can just create a new access key uh, create all right and we'll need that in just a moment. See if I can make that bigger as well. So how are we going to interact with MinIO on our Pi? We can get to it. Uh, great, it's object storage. Uh, well, let's see what MinIO has for us. So I'm just going to Google uh, MinIO Python example. And hopefully this will, actually I think I saw API reference Okay, so we need to, all right, we need to install MinIO, the Python package, uh, and then it has kind of a, a freebie uh, test script there. So let's go ahead, let's see the best way to do this, I'm going to open yet another terminal, and I'm just going to make a directory called demo. And switch to it. Start Visual Studio Code. And let's see. I'm going to just make a Python script. Call it whatever you'd like. Upload.py seems to make sense. And we'll just copy the script provided there. So I'll copy that. Paste, make that a little bit bigger so people on smaller screens can see. And uh, we can break this down real quick. So it's making a client. So that's going to allow us to communicate with MinIO. Uh, it's looking for a source file in the temp directory on this computer. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, uh, this file is going to be here in this directory, dot slash, and uh, let's see, I just need to name that the same, uh, testfile.txt. And just so you're aware, you're not limited to flat files. These could be images, videos, uh, whatever you'd really like. 
and I'll say hello from your local PC. And I'll save that. All right. And then it's going to set a bucket name, Python test bucket. Uh, as you saw, I deleted that because I had already run through this before. Uh, the destination file, it's going to be the same. Uh, yeah, I guess it's not worth changing that name to demonstrate it. So it's going to say, uh, if the bucket is there, or if it's, if the bucket's not there, it's going to create it, it's going to print out created the bucket. Otherwise, it's going to say it already exists. Uh, and then just some success, the file loaded, uh, and then some errors there uh, if there was a failure. I'm going to open up a terminal and install min.io. I already have it installed, so it's going to skip uh, if you don't have it installed. You'll see those lines race across and you'll see it installed. Okay. So I think we are all set and just so we can see it being created. Oh, we do need to copy the access key and the secret key. I'll do that real quick. Just replace these here. And we also need this one. Make sure you replace the whole string. And this, where are we going to? We are going to Pi4. The MDNS name uh, of the Pi4, what uh, the devices in my home network know this device as. Could have also used the IP address. Uh, that would have been fine as well. So let's go ahead and kick this off. And spoiler alert, it will probably just hang and eventually give us an error. Uh, now, why is that? Uh, it's looking for a certificate. It's looking for a secure connection uh, to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, I did play around with that actually over several days and could not get it to work. Uh, jumped into the MinIO Slack, uh, which they were very helpful, but still uh, it was kind of duct tape and bubble gum the way I uh, got it working. And actually before I forget, I was looking for the MinIO Slack for a while and couldn't track it down. The great thing about running it here is if you scroll down to, uh, let's see, is it configuration? Somewhere I didn't really expect it here. Probably should have ran through this before. This is kind of off the cuff. Oh, license. So if you look here, uh, free software, which is what we're using, uh, join the Slack. Uh, really couldn't track that down a lot of other places, which I found odd. But again, uh, small Slack, very helpful individuals, though. So if you run into issues, uh, best to ask there and not here because uh, I'm just kind of dipping my toes in. Uh, but at the end, I'll point you to two resources where you can generate kind of fake certificates and kind of get it to work. Uh, but in the meantime, we're just going to, through playing around, uh, I'm going to just do secure equals false. Save that, uh, control C, and then go ahead and try that again. And if you notice when we connected, uh, this is not HTTPS, it's HTTP, uh, because no certificate. Okay. And uh, connection refused. So I think I do need to specify a port here. And let's try that one more time. Uh, go ahead and look at our buckets just to prove to ourselves. So there's no buckets. And we'll run that. All right, switch back, give that a good old refresh. There's our Python test bucket. Ooh, and if we go to object browser, uh, we can see our file. Uh, we can go ahead and download that. And hello from your local PC. 
So uh, I guess two resources I could point you to, and let me grab my note here real quick. Uh, there is make cert uh, that you can look into. Uh, I'll post down in the comments or uh, maybe a link, I'll make a GitHub repo and just show. Uh, I wasn't able to get make cert uh, to work, but actually uh, min.io makes a program called cert gen. And I was mostly able to get that to work but I couldn't get the CA certificate. Uh, just had to kind of slide another flag into the client. Uh, but then it throws a bunch of warnings every time and it was just kind of annoying. Uh, so again, not production grade stuff. This is just if you're tinkering around at home um, and you want to start playing with object storage and I don't know, you're tight on cash but you have a Raspberry Pi 4 you don't need to pay for AWS or GCP or any of those others. Uh, you can do it right in your local network, which, uh, I don't know, it was a fun project. And hopefully, uh, if others want to replicate this, it's a pretty simple walkthrough. Oh, and just a few more gotchas. Uh, so if you start playing around with this and, say, want to just start with a clean slate, again, not too bad, but a few hiccups. So, where's my min.io running? Uh, there we go. Control-C, bring that down. Uh, and say I want to run it again. Well, you know, it's not going to let me because uh, there's already a container. You saw me do that at the beginning. Uh, if we list, we need to docker container prune. Uh, and it will remove that. Uh, and also, then if you spin it back up and go, hey, wait, my, my data and such is, is still there. Well, you need to go to the data directory, uh, delete that bucket, and also any configuration you've made. It hides as a hidden file. So in this case, you would need to remove min.io sys and the Python test bucket uh, to really kind of have a clean slate. But that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I will see you in another one.